Okay, let's see if we've got Ramonia on the line. Ramonia, have we got you on the line? Hi, can you hear me, Ramonia? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. I'm just going to quickly turn you down a bit because at the moment you're blasting into my ear. Can you just say hi for me? Hi. Hi, there we go. Okay. Ramonia, you're in grade 12 and you've picked up this question. I'm sure it comes out of your textbook. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And Ramonia, you said that you were given two functions. F yes. of x was 2x plus 3 and g of x was x minus 3 all over 2. Have mm -hmm. I got that right? Yeah. Okay. And what they wanted you to do was to show that g of x was the inverse of f. Have I got the question? Yes. Okay. Now, Ramonia, just very quickly, do you know what inverse graphs are? Have you got any idea what, in, what an inverse is? No. Nope. What an inverse is? Do you know what an inverse of a function is? No, nope, not exactly. Not exactly. Okay. Nope. Ramonia, let me just have a quick uh, kind of demonstration for you. If on a Cartesian plane you have got a point with the coordinates x, y. In grade 11, you learnt how to actually reflect this point in a number of different lines. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. Now, Ramonia, if we were to reflect across the y-axis, what did the coordinates of that point become? Can you remember? Can you remember? I don't remember. Okay, so if we reflect across the y-axis, our x-coordinate changes sign. So our y-value stays the same, but our x-value becomes negative. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. All right. Then, Ramonia, what you should have done is you should have then looked at what happens if you reflect across the x-axis. Now, what are my coordinates going to be if I've actually pretended that I've got a mirror here and I reflect across, any idea what these coordinates are going to be? Y. Y, yeah. And X. And X. Mm. But let me just correct you. The X is still going to be the same. But the Y, can you see, is now going to be the same distance away from the X axis. But instead of being up there, it's going to be down. Okay. So this is going to have the coordinate x minus y. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay. okay. Now that is if we reflect across the y-axis or across the x-axis. Okay? But the other kind of reflection that we have to do is if we reflect in the line y equals x. Okay, now that line there is the line y equals x. All right, let's quickly get back to white. Okay, now if, Ramonia, we take a point, x, y, and we reflect it across here, so that this distance is the same as this distance, then our new coordinates of this point are y and x. So can you tell me in words what's happened to the coordinates of the original point? They've switched, haven't they, Ramonia? The x, y has become y, x. Can you see that they've switched? They've swapped. Okay? Here they didn't swap. Here this one became negative and here the y became negative. But here they've swapped. Okay, now if we swap them, then we are actually creating the inverse. Okay, now do you know that from school? Do you? Yes. Okay, so now let's go back to the original question, please. Okay. Okay, our original question said that we must show that g of x is the inverse of f. f. Right, now Ramonia. 
I don't like this notation. I prefer it to say y equals 2x add 3. Okay, you comfortable with that? Yes. Okay, now I'm now saying I need the inverse. So for the inverse, I need to swap my x and my y. So what is my next line going to read, Ramonia, if I swap x and y? What is it going to read? Is 2x plus 3 negative 3 equals to 2x? Um, no, I don't want you to rearrange it. I just want you to swap the x and the y. So, x and y. Yeah. So, so in place of y here, let's put x. Okay, so we swap them. And then in place of x here, we're going to put y. Okay? okay? So yeah. that's what I'm telling you, swap them. Just change them so that where x was before yeah. we put a y and where y was before we put an x. Okay, is that easy enough? Yes. Okay, great. Now, notice that what we've now got is an equation, but it's in the x form. All right? But how do we normally want an equation? Left in the x form or in the y form? When you draw any graph, does it normally say x equals or does it normally say y equals? X equals to. Okay, so I think that you need to do a little bit of graph work here, my darling, because whenever we draw a function, we draw a f of x or a g of x or an h of x, and that is the same as y. So we always try and get it to read y equals. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make y the subject of the formula, and I'm going to bring the minus 2y onto the left-hand side, and I'm going to put the x on the other side. Can you follow what I've done there? Ramonia, can you follow what I've done? Okay. I, you keep on breaking up, but all I've done is I've brought the y onto the left-hand side so that I've made an attempt to get y as the subject of the formula. Now, in order to get y, I'm going to have to divide this side by minus 2. Are you still with me, Ramonia? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to divide that by minus 2 as well. Okay. Now, hopefully you can see that on the left-hand side, I've got now y equals. Okay. Now, let's see what I've actually got. I've got minus x divided by minus 2. And I've got a plus 3 over minus 2. Now, they are telling me, Ramonia, that this I've got to prove to be my inverse. So, x minus 3 over 2 is what I'm looking for. So, I hope that you can see that if I bring the minus up, that's going to become a plus x minus 3 over 2. And when I say I'm bringing it up, I'm going to times actually by negative 1. And so that becomes positive and that becomes a positive 2 on the bottom. And that becomes positive x minus 3. So compare what I've now got to what they said was the inverse. And they said I'm going to show that g of x is the inverse. And I have swapped the x's and y's and I've landed up with what they said. Yeah. <laughs>